evenings and early mornings i do public batches the way i'm doing right now coming to my areas of expertise i train you know corporates and uh, employees students across uh, multiple automation areas so i deal with front end automation using selenium catalan studio qtp then back end automation using uh, tools like postman uh, another tools like soap api tool soap ui tool ready api tool catalan studio tool i also do performance testing trainings using jmeter catlin for load runner and on security testing also i do programs using verb suite and zap tools i also do on the devops side with tools like git github gitlab jenkins bitbucket and so forth that's a quick introduction about myself and on the website we have given a small video where you can probably go through our previous demo classes and uh, we have also given the course curriculum here which you guys can definitely go through it here the entire course syllabus is available here so in the interest of ensuring that every participant understands what do they get when they enroll in this course we have clearly written a detailed course syllabus on the website which you are seeing right now and have divided this entire curriculum into multiple chapters so if i scroll down quickly i think we have almost uh, 10 chapters or so yeah so total we have 13 chapters if you see okay and this training happens to be practical training with less theory so theory will be around 10% uh, and 90% of the training is towards practical training okay and in this too in this training we are uh, we are going to learn and discuss about uh, you know rest apis uh, soap apis how to do automation testing of these apis using postman tool by writing javascripts and by verifying the responses that we get from the server by using the javascripts We'll also integrate this uh, Postman automation with tools like Newman Framework, where we can generate some nice HTML test reports, uh, JSON test reports, XML test reports, or a CSV test report, or a CLI test report. <clears throat> so, I'll use a small, uh, probably a document, to write the notes. I think I'm still audible and my screen share is visible, right? There is no network issues that you are facing, right? Yes, Kevin. Yeah. So since today is a demo class, I would like to give a quick uh, overall update of uh, what's going to happen in this course. So we are going to learn API automation testing in this course. So this is the main course thing. And the tool that we are going to use is Postman tool. And this tool is free it's open source and coming to the types of apis we are going to learn we are going to learn about rest apis and also soap api okay and coming to the programming language that we use in this is javascript again you don't have to be familiar learning javascript and joining because the javascripts are already available in the postman tool so we can pick them and reuse it and uh, Coming to the framework that we use in this tool is obviously Postman framework we use, JavaScripts we use, and then a third party framework from Postman called a Newman also we use. So this is the framework setup that we are going to do in this particular course. Okay, and please also utilize uh, today's class to, you know, uh, clear, clarify your questions if there are any. And whatever we are discussing in this training, the classes, everyday class will be recorded and it will be shared to you via email and it will be on YouTube in our channel only for the participants who have enrolled. And coming to the training material, uh, I will be sharing it via Google Drive. Coming to the type of notes I'm going to give you, this is how the notes look like. I'll just show you sample. How does the notes, training notes look like? I'm going to show you. So this is how the notes look like. 
whatever project work we are creating, it will be available here. And whatever test data we prepare, test the results, and the training material, all the nodes will be here. And this is the final automation nodes that I'm going to share with you, which is a document that I have prepared. I have prepared this for every training batch, and you get here detailed diagrams on the nodes. All these things will be shared with you towards the end of the training. So you get access to this particular folder that you're currently seeing. Okay. So you don't have to worry about the notes. You don't have to worry about the classes. The classes are getting recorded. Even today's class is getting recorded. So you can listen to it one more time. And uh, you know, probably listening to the class again and again will give you that confidence in understanding the, uh, you know, the subject and the topic that we are going to discuss. And like I said, this course is 10% theory and 90% practical. Okay. Why theory and why 10%? It could be less or more according to you. This theory is going to be the foundation for the entire training program. And this theory will help you not only in API testing, whatever theory I'm going to teach, it helps whether you are a manual tester or an automation tester, or a performance tester, or a security test engineer. So the theory I'm going to talk is general, and that is going to help in all your uh, specialties of testing. Of course, it helps in our course also. That's why I'm teaching that API automation testing. Certain things which you're not aware of, that's what I'm going to teach in the theoretical subjects, where I have the course curriculum clearly told here so chapter one where we discuss about the basics of apis uh, the introduction towards api client and server architecture that's a theory topic then the evolution of apis the classification the types of apis is also a theoretical topic and uh, chapter three is uh, you know how do you create a test plan a test case and testing techniques that's also theory chapter four onwards it is going to be practical training until we close the training program okay so uh, without you know further uh, uh, things, I think we can get started with the day one class. But before I start, do you guys have any questions for to me so that I can answer them first? So Kiran, yes. what is the duration for this course? Means how long it will take? Yeah, good question. I think I should have written it here. So the duration of the course will be around one month and uh, we do trainings monday to friday uh, which means uh, roughly you know this will be around uh, some uh, 26 hours i would say meaning 26 classes here and there it will not be exactly 26 it can be 27 28 25 also depending on how fast we discuss and how uh, well you know we align as a team together so this is the average duration one month you can say understood thank you so which obviously means uh, so ignore uh, february so we are almost on towards the end of it so probably by uh, you know uh, 31st of march we would be able to complete it if not then probably in the first week of april we'll be able to complete it but not beyond that because there are certain students who also wanted this to be completed uh, at the earliest so that they can apply in their projects and they can apply for certain jobs and interviews any other questions guys that you have and kiran if we miss some class so we'll be able to connect with you personally or can we take some additional time if we require yeah so when you miss a class there are multiple solutions for that one you will get access to the recorded videos on a daily basis whether you attend it or not you still get access to the recorded videos if you are a confirmed participant so you can go through the class again after you since you missed it and then you can discuss about that missed class if you have any questions in the next day so every day in the, the first five minutes or 10 minutes usually i allocate for q and a session questions and answers so utilize that time to you know uh, discuss about your challenges that you are facing understanding the course or understanding the topic otherwise we also have a whatsapp group right we can also post your question i mean you can post the questions in the whatsapp group and i can answer those questions in the whatsapp as well okay thank you okay, yeah. okay. how about uh, rest of the folks any questions 
uh, what would be the timing for the class um, the timings would be the same timing the way i'm doing right now so indian timings uh, uh, 9 pm ist to 10 pm one hour every day it starts at the same time johnny 9 pm indian standard timings ist um, yeah, so basically the timing, uh, which is set right now, uh, 3.30, I mean, 9, nine o'clock in India, uh, it's basically half the, the basically mid, midday in the UK. So do you have any okay. other timing? Like if you starts in the afternoon, then it's going to be uh, in the morning for us. Okay, okay. Because in the midday, basically, it's really impossible to come out of anything you are doing either you will be at work or you will be doing something else so it's really uh, not easy pull off something and then come to and join the class so this is really not uh, suitable for me do you have any options that uh, you can run a session uh, so i can attend the class in the morning okay you are morning right uh, so i'll have to work on the time zone conversions and see what Slot actually works for you and me. Uh, or is, so, there, is there anyone I can discuss about it uh, after this webinar? Or yes, yes definitely you can discuss. Uh, uh, are you in touch with the Kumar or Anita from our team? Can can they ping me so I can directly contact them? Definitely, I will uh, have them uh, talk to you over WhatsApp or uh, some channel, and uh, they'll be able to guide you for sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for bringing this. Okay. And uh, how about others? Like any questions? Like let's say Shilpa, you have any questions? Samir, Kiran, Sunita, Vinayak, Mohan, Kaveri, Srilata. Any questions that you have, feel free to unmute. And any general questions I'm saying, like Zoni has some questions on the timings. You guys have any questions or all good? And we have this, uh, we have about 200 and something people uh, in this group. Uh, I mean, in this session. So, how many people will be attending in one session? No, we have only 12 participants right now, not 200, 12. Okay, because when it's like more than uh, expected amount of people, like 40, 50, then the class gets very noisy and the connection keeps dropping. Because mm -hmm. I have seen that similar classes before, and it's when the sequence breaks. It really gets out of hand and the learning gets affected. Absolutely. That's true. That's true. So what we ensure is we and our team ensure that per batch uh, we have like maximum 15 participants. We don't encourage more than 15 participants. Uh, and if, in case if there are more students enrolling, we have a separate uh, batch that we start. So that you know we distribute the students into multiple batches so we will not encourage like 20 30 participants in a single batch uh, so is there you know, anything you can do about like i explained so i have to take completely one month off to continue this course like you are attending the class uh, the time is basically midday for us i would not be able to go to work at all for one month so yeah, what can we do about this yeah, I think uh, changing the, I mean, we'll have to figure out another timing uh, for you. Uh, so I'll have to get the similar feedback from others and see what timing works. And obviously democracy wins. Uh, so if uh, there are a couple of participants willing to have at a different time slot, uh, mm -hmm. Isha team, uh, you know, Isha team will be, you know, working out on the timings strategy. So we mm -hmm. will definitely get back to you on the timing. So I'll have uh, one of our team member contact you and, uh, you know, probably figure it out. Uh, how this timing can be sorted out that works in the favor of participants right okay okay so sounds good so what we'll do right now is we'll get started with uh, chapter one which is introduction towards api basics right so in i won't be using yeah. voice is breaking sometimes couldn't Oh, is it for everyone or it's uh, a few people? It's clear, so is, sir. Is it better? Not, is it not better for anyway? me. Okay. Okay. 
yeah so maybe it could be a small network glitch either on your side or my side that could probably be an issue and uh, any time my audio or video has a disturbance feel free to post a message on the chat or you can unmute and uh, just you know convey the message that i'm pretty much not audible or the screen share have a disruption uh, because network i could see that the network is uh, uh, you know my c4 this uh, 20 is 4 so i think that's probably good for me <clears throat> okay so what we'll do is we will just talk a little bit about the basics of api today i don't get into too much of advanced right on day 1 and day 2 the basics we will discuss basics of api first we need to understand what is the full form for api and the definition for api so api stands for application programming interface that is the abbreviation given for api and coming to the definition of it uh, i'll write the definition then i'll give a diagram and try to uh, convert my definition into a diagram and explain it so that it becomes easier for you to understand the definition of api so i will say an api is an interface or a component developed to enable data transfer across multiple modules in an enterprise application so that is the definition of an api so this definition probably looks little difficult but let me put it in the form of a diagram so it becomes little easier for us so i have taken my paint application and let's think of a small software application so i'll say this is a software assume that this is a software and inside this software let's say that there are four modules module 1 let's say module 2 and let's say module 3 and let's say module 4 okay we can take even 10 modules but for the sake of simplicity and understanding i have taken four modules and let's say that the first module is login module that you see in most of the applications and there is another module let's call it as logout module and let's talk about another module called uh, add item to shopping cart and let's say the last option is make payments and let us say this application that we are talking about is something like https colon slash slash www.amazon.in okay so assume that you have browsed uh, on your browser amazon e-commerce application amazon.co.uk or amazon.com or amazon.in and i'll just talk about these four modules we all know that uh, unless you log in you cannot log out right and unless you log in you cannot make a payment right if you go to any e-commerce application which is available online whether you are booking a movie ticket or buying something online such as buying a grocery or buying some shopping items or buying food online you have to make online payment and for us to make online payment login is mandatory because the server or the database has to know what is your address where it has to be shipped whether your default payment is a credit card or a upi payment or a debit card or pay later option or it could be internet banking or something else so we know that to make a payment login is mandatory and to log out login is also mandatory however if i come to the second module which is add items to shopping cart it's not mandatory that you have to log in right so if you go to this amazon.in on my computer i am going to amazon.in and you see here i am not signed in yet i am a guest user but you see i am able to browse happily I'm able to click on some cameras that I'm interested. Let's say this one, and I click on something. And here, I can click on Add to Cart. You see, I'm not logged in. When I click on Add to Cart, so it says Add it to Cart. And here I can see in the shopping cart one is there, and this item is available in the shopping cart. Okay, let me delete the item from the shopping cart. 
so this example proves that you don't have to be logged in to add items to shopping cart right so here i will write down some points one logout module is dependent on login module right which means unless you log in you cannot log out so i will say logout depends on login similarly payments module depends on login module because if you don't log in you cannot make a payment you can try it out on any of the e-commerce applications then add to shopping cart is independent of login module right this is obviously independent without logging in you are able to browse whereas these two modules are mandatory for you to log in right example again if you want to see that process if i take you to amazon.in and let's say i click on any of these phones i'm not logged in if you see but i can still add this item to shopping cart add to cart and you see it says add it to cart and when i want to buy it right see when i click on this buy now button which is like making a payment it's asking me to sign in because payments module or buying process is directly proportional to the login process if you have not logged in you cannot make a payment that's how most of the e-commerce applications have been designed and that's what i have written here right now that this logic we have it the developer who is designing this application what they do is whenever the user clicks on logout button this logout button is dependent on login so it will make a function call to the login module and says hey looks like the current user wanted to log out so please tell me has he earlier logged in or had he earlier logged in and the login module says well let me check in my database whether this user is currently logged in or not after that the login module gives back a response to the logout module and says yeah looks like the current user is logged in you can probably log him out then the application will be logging the user out as a user when you click on logout you are logged out that is what you and i know but technically speaking when you click on logout button logout button is making a function call okay it is making a function call and this function call is like sending a question to the login module saying is the current user called kiran still logged in or he never logged in and login module gives an appropriate answer by checking with the database that yes kiran is logged in or kiran is not logged in and if the answer is yes kiran is logged in the logout module will kick my user session out and i will be logged out similarly when i click on make a payments module make a payments also will check with login because it is dependent on login so it will ask login module a question or a request it will send through a function call and says did the current user logged in because he wanted to make a payment again this will go and check with the database and gives back a response to make a payments module and says that yeah kiran is logged in so now make a payment says okay kiran is logged in good at the same time make a payment will also make another function call to add items to shopping cart because you cannot make a payment if the shopping cart is empty or if your basket is empty so make a payments will make another api call or another function call to add items to shopping cart and says hey the current user is logged in but did he or she added any items to the shopping cart this will also check with the database and gives back a response probably it says that hey he has added two items in the shopping cart then the make a payments module will route my user to the payment page of the bank where the user can make a payment so here when you are clicking on logout button or make a payments button you see so much of transactions are happening in the software application and these transactions are nothing but function calls every function call has a request going and a response coming right so this is the request it is going and finally i'm i'm also getting a response that items added in the shopping cart is one item or two items now the biggest question is how these modules are talking to each other what is the technology that is helping logout and login to talk what is the technology that is helping make a payments and login module 
or make a payments and add items to shopping cart to talk to each other the answer is api application programming interface so all these pink lines purple lines or blue lines is where the api calls are happening so the request that is going from logout to login is a api request the response coming from login to logout is an api response the request going from make a payments to add items to shopping cart is a api request the response coming from shopping cart to make a payments is also api response so the technology developers use to make these modules communicate with each other talk to each other or exchange the data is called api technology and that is the definition i have written here see an api is a component developed to enable data transfer so are we transferring the data by sending a request and receiving the response yes and this data transfer is happening across multiple modules are these modules talking to each other like login and make a payments is talking log out and login is talking shopping cart and make a payments is talking yes and all these modules are present where in a software project which we call it as enterprise application and that enterprise application is nothing but this amazon dot in application right now in my example so this is the explanation i have to make clear to you the definition of an api is this clear guys to everyone what is an api please read the definition and look at the diagram let me know if you still need explanation but do let me know is it clear or not yet so paragraph icon so much what you do you see there is an option here just select it so guys if you are speaking to me be, be a little bit loud or once you do it there will be only one page if you see here there is only page one of one once course will be hidden is this clear to everyone go to view zani you can go on mute please as you are speaking to someone guys i need some acknowledgments no silence please clear or unclear yes is clear sir clear okay. clear sir okay so yeah so unless you acknowledge i, I would not know whether i am still audible or i am disconnected so that's how i define an api and diagrammatically this is an evidence how apis are actually there in the place now let me try to answer or let me try to put a second question and a second answer So right now i am talking to you and i am communicating with you and you are also communicating with me and we are using english as the mode of communication between us because probably we are all comfortable speaking in english as there are different people across the cities and countries joining this demo class so i feel english is the best medium for communication the same question if i apply in my diagram logout is talking to login through api but what language are they using are they using english or spanish or some french or some hindi how do we know that so the answer is software applications they don't talk in the languages that we talk right so there has to be different languages that these applications use so when it comes to api technology one second So when it comes to APS technology, uh, these uh, applications they use. I will write it down here. So APIs uses data descriptive languages to communicate across multiple modules. So what is this? Uh, descriptive languages so that also i'm going to write it such as so apis can talk to each other in text format or they can talk to each other in uh, html format or they can talk to each other in xml format or they can talk to each other in json format and like this there are so many technologies uh, there is one more technology called yaml etc i will say so these are the different languages or data descriptive formats that apis can use to communicate with each other 
which means login and logout can talk to each other in text format or html or one of these things now text format is something which is pretty much outdated no developer today uses text format i would say it is not 100% outdated but 99% outdated technology if you pick up uh, any software enterprise application the developers won't be using text format to transfer the data from one module to another module because text is very unsecured and very outdated and coming to html format this is also 90% outdated okay this was uh, these technologies were used like 20 years before and 15 years before but not today uh, because again html is also pretty much outdated when it comes to transferring the data when it comes to xml it is 80% outdated technology but still 20% companies are using it today okay and when it comes to json it is 100% usage meaning today or from the last 10 years all the developers across all the organizations for different projects in the world they use json as the communication format to send the data from one line, from one module to another module and yaml is another uh, format that's gaining momentum these days yaml is also being used i would probably say 50% is the usage as of now because it's a little newer technology as compared to json format so if you are interested to know how this format looks like i can write a small example here so if you talk about a text format it's a free format that is there is no syntax associated if you are writing you know text to format <clears throat> uh, guys are you all uh, clear until this point yes yes sir yeah give me just one second mm. yeah okay fine i'm clear Just give me one second i have to mute myself
uh, guys i'm sorry about that i'm back um, am i still audible clear yes sir yes yeah. so we are talking about these different formats right so if you are interested to know how this format looks i'll just give a simple example so that you know there will be no confusion to you text format has no rules no syntaxes no structure it can follow any format so if you want an example of text to format and let's say i wanted to write something like uh, the trainer name is kiran and uh, he is teaching uh, ap atsk i can write it in any format i mean i can write i can write something like this the trainer name is kiran i can write in the next line there is no problem if i write it and i can say and he is teaching postman tool for api testing so you see i am not following proper syntax i mean in general english i am speaking i am writing few lines in line 1 few things in line 2 few things in line 3 line 4 line 5 because text to format says that i don't have any rules that you have to write something like this okay so text to format is a free format you don't have to follow any rules and regulations that's how text to format is there and if you want an example of html format right so i'll say example for html format usually html format always starts with a tag like html and every tag you open has to be closed with a forward slash and in between you can write anything so something you will have like uh, body and then you can write like this uh and then i can also write something like heading so there are a lot of tags available in html format and in heading i can probably say uh, my name is kiran this will be in heading 1 so i can say heading 1 meaning it will come in very very big text and i'll just copy this i'll paste it and i will say here heading 2 which means a lesser font size and it will say i am teaching api testing using postman too so this is how the format looks like for html so usually you will have something like whenever you see the tag html it's a clue for you that the syntax used by developer is html code okay you don't have to remember all these things i'm just giving you examples only and let's say finally you wanted example for xml format i'll just copy the same thing okay i'll copy the same thing i'll paste it in the place of html you will see xml here that's the only difference so here if you see xml and the tag closing is also xml then that's called as an xml code written by developer to transfer the data from one module to another module and finally what is important is this json format that's what most of the apis are using these days so coming to json format first of all we should know what is json full form so the full form is java script object notation and json follows key value pair structure what is key and value key is like name value is like kiran because my name is kiran key is like course and the value is api testing key is like automation tool name and the value is postman key is like timing value is 9 pm to 10 pm right something like that it follows a key and value and the syntax is it starts with a flower bracket and it ends with a flower bracket and in between you will have key in double quotations then a value and if you have one more key again a comma will be there and you will write one more key like this and this continues depending on how many keys you have if you want to write 20 keys write 20 keys and 20 values if you want one example i can write something like name is kiran because my name is kiran the trainer name is kiran and course name that i am teaching is api testing and the tool 
टाइप आई एम टीचिंग इज पोस्टमैन राइट एंड दिस इज सेम एज वॉट ए रोट हियर माई नेम इज किरण आई एम टीचिंग एपीए टेस्टिंग यूजिंग पोस्टमैन टूल बट दिस कम्स लाइक ए शॉर्टकट right my name is kiran is here and the course i am teaching is api testing using a tool called postman so here you can write anything course name or just a course or tool type or just a tool like the key can be anything the value can be anything this is how you represent a json structure so whenever you see a format like this you have to keep in mind that hey this is following a json example so the developers will use these kind of formats whenever you know apis are being used to transfer the data from one module to another module so the same diagram i can specify that the data transfer is happening in json format or xml format or html format or a text format or probably if we are using some advanced ones then even a yaml format can be there so these are the different formats that a developer will use to transfer the data from one module to another module like i am speaking to you in english but at home i speak in some other language and probably when i go abroad i might speak speak in spanish or i might speak in french depending on the necessity depending on the need of the hour so developers also will choose one of these communication methodologies to transfer the data from one module to another module using apis okay so when i say apis the data transfer can happen in one of these format and most likely we will always go for json only we in the sense not me the industry is going with json text format and html format or outdated formats xml few organizations are still using it json every organization is using it and when it comes to yaml few organizations are using it who wanted a better technology than json okay so we discussed what is an api api stands for application programming interface and the definition of an api is it will help you transfer the data from one module to another module or it will send the data from one module to another module and receive the data from another module to current module and while transferring the data from one module to another module the data transfer meaning the request and response can be in text format or html format or xml format or json format or yaml format and the syntax of these formats are given here just for reference purpose you just go to google.com or wikipedia and find a better uh, example than this but this is at a simple example that i would like to give it to you guys am i clear guys until this point yes okay and uh, do you guys have any other questions to ask this is all i have for today's class the small demo class that we had uh, hi kiran uh, i joined a few minutes late to to the session so i just have few queries related to the course okay go ahead kaveri so i i i think the duration is one month for this course right yes and uh, this course is related to automation right so currently uh, the postman tool is uh, like um, evolved to like uh, uh, we can uh, automate the scripts for uh, while uh, using the api testing as well so like how is this framework and everything is now currently automating in postman tool okay so using postman tool we can do manual testing of apis and we can also do automation testing of apis and this course is teaching both manual testing of apis and automation testing of apis using postman tool by writing the java scripts inside the postman tool okay yeah and we will also use another framework called newman to help us uh, write some commands in the command prompt and generate uh, you know html test report or a csv test report or a json test report or an xml test report so this okay. course is not manual alone it is both manual testing plus automation testing of apis by writing java scripts okay okay and uh, so what about the co like uh, code repositories and how all all those will be like taught here in this course 
like how we can okay how do i share how do i share is that the question uh, share or how can we like uh, uh, generate this automation framework or create end to end framework and maintain the repositories within the team and such kind of uh, information will be shared during the course yes yes definitely it is a part of the course it will be shared it will be practically done by me and you will understand it okay okay but uh, as far as uh, i know uh, currently the uh, for api automation the rest assured were uh, we were using in our uh, like uh, organization and many of the testers are using those but postman uh, is it that currently postman has offered this automation kind of framework or is it there itself from, since it is started with postman okay see there are so many tools for doing automation testing rest assured mm -hmm. tool is also a good tool but in rest assured mm -hmm. you have to write lot of code the entire yeah. thing in rest assured is 100% coding you have to be a java mm -hmm. developer to write uh, automation in rest assured whereas in postman postman has a user interface so you don't have to write 100% code most of the mm -hmm. code is given by postman only so you have to just configure the code in the postman and make some changes and execute it okay so whatever we used to uh, implement in rest assured that will be implemented in postman as well and we can completely transfer from the uh, rest assured to postman right for uh, yeah 100% correct 100% right okay okay any other questions guys okay so course uh, uh, i think the course has started or are you this is demo class right yeah the classes will be on the same time monday to friday same time 9 pm to 10 pm indian standard yes. time when are those going to start i mean just to confirm the registration and everything no, it started already. Today we call it as a demo class, but the classes started. This is class one, tomorrow class two, day after class three. Okay. So the batch started with today's class only. Okay, okay. Yeah. Any other questions? None for myself. Thank you. Good. How about others? Any questions that you have? Okay, if there are no more questions. Oh, sorry, um, uh, I have a question for you. Yeah, Can you hear yeah. me? Okay. Yeah, the question I have is like, uh, do you teach integration with Jenkins uh, or Newman is good enough? Once we uh, write the, all the... Uh, yeah, we can. I mean, I, I teach even Jenkins integration uh, on the Postman using Newman. Okay. I teach that okay. also. That's also part of the course. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much guys uh, for joining this demonstration class. We'll have the classes tomorrow as well. Please communicate back with the Isha team if you have any questions or have plans to discuss. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Thank you very much for your time and patience today. Good night, thank take you. care, bye-bye. Thank you, good night.